Power, de pass power, amen. Jesus, pana super, amen. Power, de pass power, amen. Jesus, pana super, amen. Super power, super power, super power, eh, super power, super power, super power. Super power, super power, super power. Super power, super power, super power. Yes, so power day, past power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome all and hope you're doing great. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing great and welcome to this beautiful video. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're new here, welcome. I appreciate you for clicking on this video and don't make it your last. So subscribe, hit that subscribe button now. Like this video, share, comment and do all those good stuffs. I love you all, all returning subscribers. Mwah. You guys are the real MVP. I couldn't be here without you. It's not easy posting a video. I have, even if it's just one person that watches that video, yes, the person has tried. So I thank you all for staying tuned with me. God bless you all and God meets you all at all points of your needs. Yeah. So if you're new, let me do a quick introduction. My name is Omolade and this is the face behind Cecilia's face. I'm based in Lagos, Nigeria. I film about faith, storytelling, family, motherhood, lifestyle, vlog, and all those good stuffs. So do well to make it a place here. So subscribe if you've not. So today, hmm, today we are talking about a story, a movie, a movie that I cannot keep calm on. I just must bring it up to you here because I don't know if you have seen the movie Abatu, Abatu. Abato, Abatoa, whichever one, whichever one is good pronunciation, just take it like that. So if you don't know, it's a film by Mount Zion Films Ministry. If you don't know Mount Zion Films, Mount Zion Films is a Christian-based film ministry. Yep. And it belongs to a family, my Bamiloye family. They are like the visionaries of this ministry. So they do Christian films from time to time. They collaborate with other people to make Christian movies and it's just a place you must be in. So the father started it, Mike Bamiloye. So their sons have actually taken over. So this film was actually done by one of his sons, Damidola Mike Bamiloye. And he's the one that runs the YouTube channel now. So I'll just give you a summary of the movie. But I would suggest that you take your time and watch it. This is actually the fourth season that they are shooting. So there's season one, there's season two, there's season three, and there's season four. So this is season four, and they have and, and so far they have released four episodes from that season. So now let's go right into this beautiful movie that cannot just keep me calm. Eh? It cannot keep me calm because the movie is a movie for all. Everyone needs to watch it be it a christian be it a muslim be it a non-christian be it a traditionalist everyone needs to watch it because jesus jesus is just sweet remember is what says at the mention of the name of jesus every knee in heaven under the earth um on earth will bow that jesus christ is lord yes so at the mention of the name of jesus so this abatia is about cultists versus jesus you see cultist versus jesus a cult versus jesus and who do you think will win jesus always wins jesus does not fail jesus will always win so that is what the movie is about so it's about this cult and christians so this cult um they use blood to renew their to renew their positions to get higher in positions so let me tell you about like this major cast in the film we have drew soya we have martins we have Bade, we have baba Biro. those are like the four major people in this movie but there are other cast too but these are like the four major people that i want to talk about so drew soya is martin's father Biro is drew soya's friend Baba Gbenro is Martin's like spiritual father or like second father, shall let's put it like that. So Duro Sonya is in this so-called cult. So he needed to renew his power to 
move up the ladder in the courts so he sacrificed his wife for that purpose and his son martins discovered it and started threatening his father as his father he became very very disobedient he never used to obey his father he became very very rebellious he doesn't follow instructions and all that so his father said this son will put me in trouble so he contacted his friend Bade that what can we do to this boy Bade said he knows a man that they will take him to that that will be his new home so they took Martin to Baba Gwenru's house Baba Gwenru happened to be a very strong man of God at least he's a everybody needs a mentor Baba Gwenru was is a mentor to Martins. So Baba Gwenro started bringing up Martins in the way of the Lord. So Martins grew in the way of the Lord to the point that he did not want to be associated with his father. He did not even want to hear his father's name. He had taken Baba Gwenro as his father. So Bade and um, Duro Sawyer kept on with their activities in the courts. So every, I think maybe it was yearly or occasionally, they normally require blood to renew their stay in the court or to go higher in the court. So on this unfortunate day, Bade had a daughter in high school, so her friends invited her to a party, which happened to be in the club then. But um, Durosan was also in the court and he needed a girl for the renewal of his power. Unfortunately for Bade's daughter, she fell prey to it, so Durosoya sacrificed Bade's daughter for the purpose of that sacrifice. That was how Bade lost his daughter. So Bade found out that it was his daughter. Rather, Bade got a message that his daughter was dead, so his wife and his daughter went to the police and he said that this is not natural that somebody actually slaughtered his daughter. So he did everything he could to find out who it was and unfortunately for him it was his friend Duro Sonya. So that like destroyed their friendship and he did everything he could. He said he was going to go after his son Martins and kill his son. That since he killed his own daughter that he was going to kill his son. Meanwhile Duro Sonya did not know that the girl was his daughter. He just thought it was like a random girl that comes to the club. But unfortunately for Bade his daughter died. So that was how the fight started between Bade and Duro Sonia. So Martins is a he had he is now grown, so he's now elected. He was teaching in a secondary school. He was a Christian, so he was like the head of the school fellowship then. So he led children, young children to Christ and did other uh, did other things for God Shine in school. So there was this girl that came into school, she didn't go through the right process. She was sent to that school to destroy Martin's life. She was a prostitute, so Bade saw her on the road. Bade Sha negotiated with her. That's how the girl Sha implicated uh, Martin's, and that was how Martin's ended up in prison. So everybody was wondering that this guy, a good Christian, that how can he do such a thing? The girl said that he raped, he raped her, so he ended up in prison. So, you know, you cannot hide light. If you put light under the table, it will surely shine. So in the prison, he held on to God, recited all the Psalms and all that. So there was like a fire outbreak or maybe somebody planted fire in the prison. But to the amazement of all, Martin's cell was not on fire. And his father also was also trying to destroy him. So that's how his father appeared to him from the spirit realm to him and said, today you are going to die. He said, no, he cannot die. He started reciting Psalm 23, Psalm 91. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want him. That dwells in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And all those psalms, are those powerful psalms of protection. That's how fire shall burns Duro Sonya where he was. And that was how Duro Sonya's journey started. He was in coma for three good years and Martins had to, Martins was like the only one they could call that should take care of his father. So Martins had to forgive his father, started seeking for forgiveness from for God, for his father, so that his father will get well. So that's like the summary of season one, two, and three. So now we are in season four, the most important one, the one that is not keeping me calm. That's where we are now. So season four is 
father was in coma the last hospital he was they said that ah, that if this man should come out of this coma if he should, if he should have a, a heart attack again that there's no how he will recover from it so martins had no choice than to take his father out of the hospital and take him to baba Benru's house remember baba Benru is martin's spiritual father and like his second dad that took him when the road was rough so it was baba Benru's birthday and you know baba Benru, so he has a child that is called Benru. so Benru is a lawyer so Benru bought a car for his dad to celebrate his birthday his dad was happy about the gift but his mother was all over the place thanking god rolling on the floor his father was now wondering that why is this woman all about like this because of this gift and i told his son that not he does not appreciate this gift though but he would have loved it if his son could get him souls that he could lead to christ his father his son was very very and he said ah that i bought you a car that you are not even appreciated that say our mommy is all over thanking god but you you are saying that you want souls all your life is just about souls 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 I said that yes now that that's what I want that that's what even God wants that sinner should come unto me his son was not happy that's how Martins came and Martin said ah, that I have a soul for you if you are not he said hey the man's faith leads say you have a soul say yes that's how Martins led him to his room and it was his father that was there he said hey Chief Duro Sonia what was it in here that thing that narrated to him what all the audio that he has been going through I said, don't worry, that we'll fight this battle together. So every day, every night, they're always praying for Martin's father. Remember, Bade had vowed that he was going to bring down Duro Sonia and Martin. So he had not yet relented on that his threat or promise. So he went to the court. So they gave him an assignment in the court that he must bring down Duro Sonia. But all attempts to bring him down failed. So... The head of the court now took it upon himself to make sure that Duro Sonia comes down. So in the spirit realm, the head of the court appeared to Duro Sonia in like a trance and tried stabbing Duro Sonia. And Duro Sonia started shouting, Martins, Martins, save me. He said, your son cannot save you. He said, he will save me, he will save me. Remember, Duro Sonia does not know anything about God. He just knew that his son was a spiritual person. So he just knew that his son could save him from anything that is happening to him at this moment. So it was his son's name he was calling. He was not even calling Jesus. He doesn't even know who Jesus is. So he was just saying, Martins, Martin, save me. The head of the court was saying, Martins cannot save me. He said, he will save me. That's how he just summoned. He gathered strength from nowhere. Remember, he was very weak. He was in coma. He gathered strength from nowhere and stabbed the head of the court. And that was how that one disappeared. Then the spirit of death appeared to him and said, no, today you are going down. He said, no, I'm not dying. Martin, save me. Martin, save me. That's how the power of um, the light from heaven just shone on him. Very bright light and came to him and told him and said, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? And that was the moment he knew Christ. Jesus Christ preached to him in that trance. And when he came up, remember, Baba Benro, Martins and his wife, they never left his bedside. So they were there praying for him. Martins was already giving up that he's not coming up, that we are just wasting our time. But Baba Benro encouraged him that don't worry, things will work out. That's how the man just came and started, Jesus! And he didn't go back. He just sat up like that, looking at three of them. Martins was calling him, Daddy, Daddy, Dad, Dad. He did not answer. Ah, Martins was already getting frustrated. That was the name of this. Baba Benro encouraged Martin that don't worry, he will respond. Don't worry, he will respond. And like in like two seconds, Duro Sonia just tapped him and said, Martins. He turned, he said, Daddy, you can hear me? You are alive? You can speak? He said, Yes, I can speak. And I told him about the encounter. I said, Wow, you encountered Jesus. So Baba Benro now took it upon himself to start teaching him the scriptures, led him, led him to Christ, and he accepted Christ. And you know now, any bond that is in Christ is now a new creature. All things have gone away. Behold, all things have become new. So Duro Sonia became a new being in Christ. All the blood shed, all the things he had done in the past, they are already gone. He was now a new creature in Christ. So it doesn't get interesting. It begins to get interesting from here. So that's how 
Duro Soyao now took it upon himself and said, Ah, that now he's going to be a preacher of the gospel of Christ. So he was assignment was that he was going to go and preach to all those his cult members that this power that is here is useless power. Oh, that come and see the one that saved me, the one that brought me back to life. Jesus Christ is his name. So his first contact was Gbade. So he went to Gbade's house, and Gbade was even surprised to see him. And Bade said, you, Duro Sonia, I will make sure I finish you. I will make sure I kill you. You, you killed my daughter. You are making us to suffer in the, in the court. The court that gave you power, that gave you money, that gave you fame. Is this how you are going to repay them? Duro Sonia just laughed and said, all those things are in the past. I am now a new being. None of these your threats are going to work on me. I have come to tell you that you should change your ways. And come to the one who saved say who saved you is a lie. Even for your son Martin, they say, hmm, I am telling you now before it becomes too late. And I say, you know, say now um Gbadi now told him that don't worry, we are coming for you. He said, No, I am the one coming for you. Gbadi was sure. Say you come for us. Say yes, I am coming for you, and all of you will see the power of God. And he turned and he left his house. Backstory. Gbadi has a son, Akin. So Akin came back from Nigeria, eh, from America to Nigeria through his father's manipulation. So his father manipulates him. Whatever his father wants him to do, that's what he will do. He cannot question his father's authority. So plus or minus, Akin finally found out that his father was in a cult and moved out of his house to another place. So in that place he was staying, he had a dream that his father killed him. So he called his friend. To tell his friends, friends say no, it's just a dream, Jordan. Don't, ma, don't worry, nothing can happen. Your father cannot kill you. That is just a dream. That dreams like that don't, um, and uh, that she just flash it. That is just a dream. He say her that this dream is very, very vivid. Though that he's scared, as he was saying that his guest man came to call him. That one man is looking for him. That's how the guy started. He was afraid. Say which man? He shall went downstairs and he saw that. The man was Duro Sonya. He said, hello, Akin. I am Duro Sonya, your father's friend. He said, you? What are you doing in my house? You that you killed your wife, started laying all allegations against the man. The man said, yes, all what you're saying is true. But I'm here to tell you about Jesus. He said, hey, you murderer, preaching about Jesus. He said, yes, that was who I was before. But now I'm a new being. I have changed. All things have passed away. All things have become new. He started preaching to him. The man said, no, that is not going to accept oh, that he, eh, how can he, of all people, preach the gospel? He that after everything he has done, he said, yes, that was in my past. But now I have come to tell you of the one that saved me and the one that changed my story. Let me tell you, those people are after you. And if you don't give your life to Christ, you will be dead any moment from now. That's how the boys phone around go. That it was his father that was calling his father had already gotten wind that Duro Sonia was in his house. So his father, as usual, commanded him to tell the man to leave his house. The boy to said, my father said you should leave my house. That's how Duro Sonia just got up and took the phone from the boy and said, Buddy, it's enough. The one you have controlled this boy, it's enough. He is not leaving. He is not under your jazz again. So in the name of Jesus, break up that's how the boy's eyes opened and that was how the scales on the boy's eyes fell off and that's how the boy started listening to what that this um duro sonia was saying meanwhile um Bade's wife knew knows about baba Gwenro. so she used to be one of baba Gwenro's spir um spiritual children so she shall called um, but was on the phone with his friend that was already lamenting that so this how we will lose our children because of Duro Sonia. That he cannot lose his child though. That very very soon, in like three days, his daughter will be dead. He's this this and this will happen to him. Duro Sonia, um, but they said there's nothing we can do. We just have to wait for that day. So the wife was hearing what he was saying. That's how the wife just barged into Bade's room and said, "What you want to kill our son? Eh, Duro Sonia, you want to kill our son?" Uh, sorry, not Duro Sonia. Bade, you want to kill our son, Akin? Remember how our daughter died? You want to kill my only child? That no, I'm not going to let this happen. That's how she ran out of the house to Akin's house. She got to Akin's house. Akin was not there. She now picked up the phone and called Baba Gbenro. She now started lamenting. You know how mothers can be when it comes to their children. That 
Baba Vero, help me. They want to kill my son. Baba Vero was in a fix. Who is speaking? He says, Me, Morenike. They want to kill my son, Aki. They want to kill, no, don't kill my son. They want to kill my son. He said that he will kill my son. He will kill my son. He will sacrifice my son. I cannot let him go. I cannot let him happen. He said, Calm down. What is his name? She just started, she's not telling, she's not telling the man his name. She started talking. Before we knew it, the doorbell rang. Baba Vero went to go outside the door. It was Duro Sonia that was there. Duro Sonia said, Ah, Baba Guerrero, uh, meet my new convert. Baba Guerrero was on the phone. I said, Hey, who was your son's name? He said, Aki. He said, Hey, Aki. That's how the person that was with Duro Sonia was Aki. Aki now asked him, How did you know my name? And that was how they ended this episode. Hmm. That's why I started this video with Power Day, Pass Power, Amen. Jesus, Power, Na Super. Amen. Power pass power. No power on hell can hold the children of God down. Yes, so that's why I said I cannot keep calm. I must bring to you. I must make you watch this film, this movie. So if you're interested to watch it, if you want to watch it, don't start from season four. Start from season one. So you understand how the story has been. Season one, season two, season three, then season four. Season four now has four episodes. So you watch it so that you understand how God keeps prevailing for his children, no matter the gang up of the enemy. Just hold on to God. Trials may come, temptations may come, but God will surely make us to be overcomers. So if you enjoyed this little story of mine, please like, share, comment. And if you've not subscribed, subscribe. If you watch up to here, you guys are just the real deal. I love you all and see you in my next. So if you want to watch the video, just search for Damilola my Bamidoye on YouTube and you'll see the movie there. Stay blessed and remember Jesus loves you and I am already care about you. See you in my next. Bye.